two teams with contrasting fortunes here at Bridgehaw. Sterling just a handful of points away from a 100% record over the three games, but Amur are one of two teams without a win over their three games. But Amur looking a bit thin just below us here, and that's a good drive. The Sterling forwards, Russell is waiting, and they've spilled it again. And this time Ian Kenny has said that there was holding. Tackle was made, no clear. Long, high and successful. First points on the board to Stirling County with less than five minutes played. They're queuing up for the charge. Short. Short, according to the referee. They have another go. This time they're over. Well, that's very patient, and it looks as if it is Hamish Bean, I think. Just have a look. It's actually, it is Scott McGinley. Oh, yeah, it's the number five, seven. No Russell. Russell on the loop. And through he goes. Oh, wonderful running. He's off and running. He'll make it all the way. What a classic score by number 15, Logan Trotter. And that's what he's all about, Chris. What a beautifully balanced runner, and he saw the opportunity, and he just went up the line. Simple as that. He made it look effortless. Backwards through the mark. in towards the posts. Superb from the Barramir Bears, and this time it is Corey Tate. Number two, these number twos are getting oh, in on the score sheet everywhere, every game. Here they come again. And turn back out again, George Brees. This time they have men over, and more than enough to get to the line Good. this time. It's Glenn Fall, uh, sorry, Ross McKnight. As you said, Chris, one of the two big ball carriers they could offer to finish the move, and his timing was perfect. There's all sorts of stuff going on off the ball, and the action carries on five metres out. OK, two stops now, come on. Still they go. Still, Sterling tried desperately to keep them out. It's not going to work, no, because they're down, they're in, and it's worked. And it's Corey Tate again. <laughs> He's it's the Hookers Union. Excellent. Second try to Tate, third try to the Barramore Bears. It's 13 wow. 17. Just having to step back there, Scott McGinley. Closer Off the again, fourth. ever Ball closer out. by Off Benedict Grant. This time he's on his own, and over he goes. It's number four, James Powell. Has blasted over under the post. Ian Kennedy's having a very, very close look at this. The penalty's coming. And they've made a mess of it, but they have it. In fact, Benedict Grant has been given the score. And that's the bonus point secure, if nothing else. Duncan Mann, they moved it again, they're out. Bit chip over and a tackle. Oh, and the bounce, Tom Brown! Tom Brown takes advantage of the bounce and the touch and over the top. Well, that was opportunism. Yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was well created, though. Yeah. He certainly got lucky about it. Tom Brown was down with camp, cramp about two minutes ago, yeah. and he pops up and gets his award. Um. Because he has put the Barrier Bears back in the lead in an extraordinary um, exchange of 12, tries. 11 minutes. Yeah, time, time, time. So the referee has called time. All he has to do is dispatch it. The game is over. <laughs> It's a first victory in the Super 6 series for the Barramuir Bears, albeit by a single point.
Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us as we look forward to another Edinburgh derby in the Fosrock Super 6 Sprint Series with league leaders Watsonians going head to head with old foes Heriot. Goes. Looks like that is well judged there, however. Bit of a, well, we're not hanging about here. What the Heriots are away down this side, and off goes Fikuri. He's got support with him. This could be the first try of the afternoon. Bruce Houston looked like he was over himself. He's got support on the inside and eventually gets the ball back again. And Houston touches down there. Outstanding from Heriots rugby. Took the quick tap penalty away down the stand side touchline. And it took two or three passes to eventually get themselves over. Off to Cecil, very close here, four or five metres short. Watsonians look to go back to the blind side, however, referee says high tackle. And catches that one well. No mistake there by the Watsonians captain. That was uh, Ross Hutchison, an 18 jersey, going very close here. That looks like a, a hint of a high tackle by Watsonians, but play goes on, referee playing an advantage. Pick and go right through the middle of the breakdown there, though, and the referee on the spot awards the try. It's Ronan Sedak that has gone over for Heriots there. Fantastic play in the big second row, the Polish international. I'm trying to go wide wide is at uh, every opportunity here Watsonians however once again not secure at the breakdown and Heriot's penalty certainly catches it well looks like it has got the distance both oh, assistant referees on the spot having a, a close look at that one just drops over the crossbar fantastic effort there by Bruce Houston they're six or seven meters out now and they're going to keep this tight through the forwards Sean Gunn and Rory Brand well, now he gives it out to his, his 10 bag. It skips out of the tackle. Little flick out the back door. Fantastic offload to Harry Patterson. And Watsonians do get themselves across the try line. Lovely little flick out the back door. And his full back, Harry Patterson, is appearing late. Then he touches down behind the posts. And Watsonians do get themselves back into this game. Back to the feet of Jason Hill. Looks like Murdo McAndrew will just play this one away himself. Didn't quite get the time right. Little kick through there by Ross Jones. It's for James Cooper. It could work for him. Fantastic pick up by Cooper. Nobody at home at the back there for Watsonians. The easiest of tries for James Cooper. Adds to the, the try he scored against the Bulls last week. Uh, Sam Grahamslaw, the new man on in the front row for Watsonians. Charges forward. Still in possession. Great run there by Lewis Berg. Steps off his left foot. And then off his right, fantastic individual effort there by the Watsonians outside centre. And just as we said, Watsonians needed to score. To Lewis Watsonians Berg comes up, trumps for the Watsonians 15, Heriot's 25. Jason Hill can't quite come up with the goods though, because it's still Watsonians. And away goes Joe Reynolds, almost through, offload off the ground, finds his second row. Lovely pop on there to Lewis Berg. He stretches out on the ground, wonderful offload taken again by the outside centre. And that's two in quick succession for Watsonians. Tackle! Out four. Watsonians tackled centre field outside the Herricks 22. Jason Hill coming around there trying to steal that one. Rowan Frostwick desperate to keep the pace of the game up. Should be the simplest of the lot, right out in front. <laughs> Perfect kick, splits the uprights, and Watsonians do lead for the first time. An intercept there, not for the first time this afternoon. Bruce Houston taking that one, kicks it long, away downfield into the Watsonians 22. Watsonians from banging away on the door. The Heriot's line now have got to go at the length, and they may well do it through Lewis Berg. Got the pass there, offloads it to his winger Angus Guthrie. He's got the other winger, Loman McPherson, with him. And McPherson will go in the corner. It's end to end stuff here at Megaland. Outstanding score for Watsonians. Loman McPherson, the right winger, the man to go over in the left corner. Outstanding try there for Watsonians. You know, time is up. So they can just kick it out. Rowan Frostwick just runs backwards, kicks that one out sideways. And Watsonians 
have come back from looked like an impossible position. They trailed by 20 points to 10 at half time and uh, they've won it 34 points to 25. Good afternoon and welcome along to the final instalment this weekend. You'll see we are at the Green Yards for the Southern Knights match with the Ayrshire Bulls. Jones goes in once again, has a look at what options are to his right hand side and the options are powerful forwards that are able to escape the attentions of the Southern Knights defence and over for a try, six minutes gone. Southern Knights have coughed up possession inside the 22 once more. Jones, the scrum half, is able to offload towards Townsend, and Townsend with the simplest of tasks. Underneath the post to touch down. Two tries in the space of two and a half minutes, and uh, Southern Knights, you have to say, are guilty of being architects of their own downfall there. Anderson goes to ground, makes the ball available. Market will go once more. They're working it through the hands with some intelligence there. Decent offload as well from Maguire as he was going to deck. Wrestling away was Tom Jordan. Jordan still has it. Jordan going for the line. And that's a wonderful try there from Jordan. I think he's managed to get a clean grounding of the ball because it did shoot away from him as he was going down to touch the ball down over the line. Crossfield kick. That should be gathered at pace and is and taken on well there by Chamberlain. Chamberlain still has it. Great run there from Chamberlain. Nice little offload now towards the blindside flanker and it's Sam Derrick at a very important stage in the game who scores the Southern Knights opening points of the tie. 24 and a half minutes of the first half gone. And again, the referee jockeying for position, right on that try line. Can the Ayrshire Bulls reply almost immediately? What little one-two there between the fly half town's end and Tom Jordan. And Jordan this time, from practically the try line itself, topples over to score his second. Getting closer and closer towards that line. Five metres out, there's almost no stopping this Ayrshire Bulls drive towards the line. The referee just jockeying for position. Advantage going to come, but... Well, they need the advantage, I don't think so, because all the way through there, Maguire had control of the ball, he was able to power his way over the line. 31 points to 7, they lead, McPherson senses an opportunity, out towards the right-hand side, Shedden with the power, and Shedden grounds the ball, and there's, again, another illustration of just how direct this Ayrshire Bulls group of players are this afternoon. Cam Jones with a great splinter run, now needs some reinforcements coming in, it's Townsend who mops up, Hooker is Maguire out towards this right hand side and Aaron Tate is the spear man, the left winger on the right hand side, a smile on his face as he touches down, one minute on the clock in the second half. They're queuing up, literally queuing up the forwards as Joan looks to recycle once more. You feel there's uh, an inevitability about the uh, eventual outcome here as there's got space on this left-hand side and it's Jamie Shedden who was not going to be barged off the ball there. He gathered the ball towards the corner, scampered in from, what, five, six metres out. And it's recycled in Lanark. Once more, again, look at the quick ball they play just over their own 22 as the ball carriers once more. A splinter run here from McNamara. Lovely offload towards Aaron Tate. Aaron Tate, oh, he's going to back himself to go towards the corner and over the line. And we mentioned it's been a, a quiet spell for the Ayrshire Bulls in terms of try scoring. They've had a rather dry period this last seven, eight minutes while they've added a further five points. The backs are primed and ready. Now it's uh, bypassed Chamberlain there, and the ball's allowed to bounce. It comes back. The referee 17. was playing a little bit of advantage. It wor Seneca worked its way three. past Wallace Brown and After Chamberlain. But back they will come. Red path, keen to get on with it. Rennick is down, no, no, receiving no, no, some treatment. Here's Dill Clancy. Yeah, I think uh, Andrew Nimmo has been sin there. He's just been shown a yellow card. This is better from the Southern Knights. This could well be consolation right at the end of the contest. A nice offload back end field there. And that was powerful running there from Aidan Cross down the left hand side. 
Lenark hurdling the challenges on now towards Robert Beattie Beattie then remember he was injured back in the side this afternoon nice offload on the deck there towards Lanny and he's over for the score and there was again a feeling that it was almost inevitable that the Ayrshire Bulls were going to find a score from some way 62 points to 12 then the final score and this was simply emphatic.